I'm Scott Slapin of the Slapin Solomon Viola Duo, and I'm here today to talk to you about concertos. For the purist, a concerto is a very specific and limited thing. It's, it's, a, it's basically a symphony with a solo part above it. Um, and of course, of course, that's what it is. But for string players, for people learning how to play the instrument, uh, concertos, not all concertos, but many concertos are useful for a lot more than that. Uh, they are useful for taking auditions, especially the exposition of the first movement, or the whole first movement with the cadenza. Um, and the reason they're used for auditions is because they're difficult. And so, because they're difficult, they're also useful as technical material to study. Again, this is not all concertos, but this is many concertos. And I think if you look at the, the most major concertos, if you look at what's used for uh, auditioning for a, an orchestra or to get into a music school, a conservatory, you'll see that all of those are really difficult and that's why they're there. So that includes, uh, for viola, of course, the, the, uh, the concertos from the 1700s. Uh, the very first concerto ever written is the Talamon, which is a very nice piece of music. It's not used for too many auditions, but it's a very nice piece. Um, it's from around 1720. Uh, and then the, the Stamets and the Hofmeister. Those are both used on a lot of auditions, especially outside of the United States, but you'll see them more and more here. Um, and then we have in the, in the Romantic era proper, we have Berlioz's Harold in Italy. Um, some people argue that's not really a concerto. I think they're splitting hairs here a little bit. Yeah, it's a tone poem, but it's, it's, if it's not a concerto, it's, you know, it's 85% of the way there, 90% of the way there. Um, Viola, unfortunately, does not have much written from the Romantic era, which is, which is really too bad, because that's probably my favorite era of music, um, and, and of course I love the viola, so I wish we had more. Um, but we do have some, some neo-romantic music written not much later than that, and two that you'll see, that, well, the Walton Viola Concerto, which is from the 20th century, um, is a great piece of music, and it's very romantic. Um, then there's the Bartok Viola Concerto, which is very Bartok, which has romantic elements, but it's it's not really only that. Um, and then there is Hindemith's Der Schwanendreher, and so that's that's also uh, that's not really that romantic. That's more 20th century. But uh, those are the big three uh, on audition lists for for viola in the United States and elsewhere. They, again, elsewhere they also, they usually ask for two. They ask for a classical one, so Hofmeister and Stamets, and then they want one of the big three, uh, Bartok, Walton, or uh, Der Schwanendreher by Hindemith. Uh, and in the US, it's, it's often just the latter category. Uh, but because, because concertos do serve uh, a purpose in learning the instrument, um, I think it's perfectly reasonable to play violin concertos on viola, and, and many people do. Uh, I have seen published uh, the Beethoven violin concerto for viola, the Brahms violin concerto for viola. You could, uh, my wife Tanya uh, played the Bruch on viola. So you, this is a, this is a a somewhat common thing, not not played in public, not on a public recital but on a school recital as you're learning to play because it's great music um, and it does teach you how to play the instrument. So I think it's within that context, it's it's worth borrowing. There are some that have made it to the concert hall. Lillian Fuchs arranged Mozart's third violin concerto uh, for the viola. I think I played I played the slow movement once uh, with, with organ in a church in New Jersey where I'm originally from. Um, I think it, it worked quite nice. They wanted something to start the program before they did the Mozart Requiem, and so that's that's what I found. Um, so so some have made the leap, but even the ones that have not made the leap um, are really just great music. And, and you know, etudes are of course, and scales are, and sevchik and shadok, these are all useful for learning to play the instrument. But 
Uh, they don't have great melodies most of the time. Some, some of the agents do. Uh, so why not use this other stuff that's also technically very useful? Um, and uh, so, so, you know, most of the stuff we practice doesn't end up on a concert somewhere, but it still teaches you how to play the instrument. Then there are cello concertos, uh, and actually some of those are, those are more often played in public on the viola than violin concertos, and the reason is is because violin concertos have played a fifth lower, and you would have to rewrite all the orchestra parts, and that's, that creates problems. But the cello concertos are generally played a combination of either an octave higher or at pitch or some, you know, some, some combination of all of that, but the orchestra stays in the same key, so you can use the same music. Um, and, uh, you will, Elgar sanctioned his cello concerto to be played on the viola. Uh, I think Lionel Curtis got permission from him to do that. You'll hear that quite a bit. Uh, I've heard Shostakovich, I've heard, um, Dvorak, I can't say I'm a big fan of Dvorak, and I, I think it's such a cello piece, but, uh, Sanson's cello concerto I've heard. Um, so... So I don't think there's a reason to be limited. There's a ton of great music out there, and if you if you love romantic era music like I do, and you love the viola, and you want to learn how to play better, uh, all of these things sort of converge, and, and you've got a lot of great music that you can work on. Thank you. 